I you know, that we I was thinking, I was trying to remember when we met and I, I don't remember. Well, through, through, uh, um, through our beautiful Mr. Diaz. Yes. Through Mr. Christopher Diaz at say more Diaz, look him up, Pulitzer prize finalist, <laughs> but ultimately <laughs> losing for the elaborate entrance of Chad deity. Which you uh, did a reading of, like, we, what, two weeks ago? Yeah, the 10-year so anniversary amazing. reading. Oh, well, okay. I never got a chance to see it because I wasn't you in the mm -mm, No, I wasn't, I wasn't in the city at that point. So when, I mean, I've read it, obviously, but seeing it even via Zoom was so cool for me. I yeah, you, I was a little, at first, I mean, I'm always down because Chris and I have had a 10-year-long conversation about what the next step of this story is because it's so uh, impactful the writings uh, masterful um, don't tell him but he's it, so good he's so i know good. i know don't if he's on here log off dude cut log, <laughs> log back on life, after man. we fire you um which is an inside joke because chris continues he to fire to, ella and i and fire us. god a lot i've been fired so many times i know Continue. It's, Continue. but no anyway i i very much dislike i'm trying not to use the word hate anymore in my life I very much dislike theater that's filmed and so i was worried about what it would be like in like five little zoom boxes this big raucous sort of uh, uh satire of a play that's based in the world of professional wrestling but is really about capitalism and stereotyping with these really super like intimate moments about this guy's one uh, huge dream of telling a perfect story and I just I, I you know I was unsure but I'm always game to try because I love it and I got to hang out with my boys again which I haven't got to do in such a long time and it was like that it was like 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 butter from the very first reading it was like jumping on a bicycle again and we just like we found it like we were we were moving together we were vibing together like there was no miss sort of connection and I was floored by that just by the the possibility of all of us getting together adding Justin Kirk, who wasn't in any of the runs. Oh, with. I didn't know that. I was oh, he fit. And he fit like a glove. He's, I mean, he's Justin Kirk. He's very, he's um, very good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, and it was dope. And, you know, it was funny. We had, and uh, this will tell everyone a little bit about me, maybe a little too much, but we had like a little uh, Zoom, like post hang where we all like got some beers. We had beers and we were just kind of toasting and hanging out and decompress. And everyone was on and they were like, where's Dez? Where's Dez? And who's goes, he's probably in a corner crying. And everyone, and uh, for a second there, Terrence and Christian forgot. I bawled my eyes out every day after I exited that stage from doing that play because of all the personal stuff that it brought up for me and the connections that I had and like, you know, just making it there and all of like the sort of tumultuous um, non-ethnic producers that we had to get through in order for it to be made the way we wanted it to be made. There's a lot of reality behind the scenes that's happening on stage during that play. Yeah. To like birth something like that. That's a, that's. Yeah. yeah. And so I was a little bit, but I, you know, I was also. It was so great. It was so, for, for, for those of you don't, who don't know, I feel like we should, we should plug Chris and we should plug the play. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for uh, sure. Chris, um, Christopher Diaz wrote this play. What year was it? Oh man. I think he wrote the opening monologue in like 2006. We did the first, and then he wrote the last line of the play and then had to figure out how to fill in the middle. We did the first reading in 08. Yeah, yeah, very, 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 very genius Christopher Diaz. We did the first reading in 08. We did the world premiere at Victory Gardens um, in 09. We brought it to second stage in New York in 10, and um, Broadway plans fell through. Um, then we got the opportunity to take it out to the Geffen in LA, and then we hit it there for a little bit. And then we all kind of said, well, it, needs our Broadway. Broadway. it needs to it be on Broadway. I mean, you know, the, I, cause because of my experience with Johnny Legs is Freak, I just always thought that this would be something, cause we have Usman who uh, is uh, from Pakistan. We have myself, we have Terrence, who's an African American um, from America. You know, he wasn't born outside of it. And, you know, like my mixed bag of, 
Puerto Rican, Italian, and Greek together. And then, you know. It's a POC dream. It really is. It really is. And, and I not just feel in like the way that it often is, which is like, let's just stick all these different people in this thing and hope that it, like, it, it, with, it was a, th it's a thoughtful um, reflection of the world that I want to see. Yeah. Yeah. I think things, hopefully like there's an opportunity for it. And if it's not on stage again, you know, I mean, I think it can translate well over onto the screen, especially after seeing it on Zoom. So, you know, Chris, Chris's mind's always firing. If you guys don't know him, just go look up um, uh, the Elaborate Chat Deity, then look up Welcome to Arroyos. Um, and then, I'm at, Chris. Yeah, and then just be on the lookout because he's yeah. got so much popping up. And someone wrote a question here that I think we that part of this is what do we think theater will look like in 2021? And um, I just hope that we're at a place where theater is available to happen in 2020. Uh, yeah, me too. I, th I hope theater's happening. I, I think people will be hungry. I think tickets will be selling at an extraordinarily high rate. Um, I hope that these Broadway and off-Broadway houses and, um, you know, theater communities across the country don't try to jack up prices, like really try to get everybody that you can in because the theater audience was already slipping so much that this is the opportunity to reinvigorate what theater in America is, should be, should look like and allow everybody to come to the table and actually have a say in how, you know, how we're representing every sort of facet of what our American, you know, storytelling experience is like. Couldn't have said it better. Like, yeah. it's not now, Print. when. I am very tired of seeing the same people in charge telling the same stories. Like, yeah. let's move on from that. Like, yeah. there, are, there are other storytellers who need a platform. It's you know? true. Yeah. It's and true. And I think, you know, I, I think this is the opportunity and the smart the smart ones will take strong advantage of it. Wait till you see. I mean, I, you already know Oscar Eustace and the public are planning something dope. Hopefully it's my play. You know, I was doing, I was in rehearsal for a play. No. When, when you I were? Was I'm yeah. sorry. If, if, if it's not, if it's not like bubble guppies and uh, stinky and dirty right now, like I don't know it, man. That's it. Why aren't you uh, following my illustrious career? No, I was doing a play, which, you know, when you were talking about Chris's play, it made me think of this just in terms of like, it's been a labor of so many years. It's the Mona Mansour trilogy of plays. The mm. first one of the plays I did 10 years ago at the public. And now we're doing yeah. the trilogy of plays and it spans over Gosh, I'm gonna get the dates wrong right now, but it, basically, like in the plays, I age from 20 to 60. Oh, it, that's it, it is it is, an, it is a huge, huge play. It's about Palestinian refugees. It's a story that we have really, really we I, I mostly you know Mona has has fought to get told for so many years, and and it was finally mm -hmm. happening. And I, I have I have faith that it will happen, but. Ooh, it was really gutting to like, we were in tech. We were literally oh my like day, day two, I think, of tech. And then oh, they were man. like, go home, see you this weekend, maybe. And then everything's sorry. weird. Well, I can't, I can't wait to see it now because yeah, I, 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 I imagine it'll be coming back. It will. I mean, the set is there. <laughs> they they didn't, they weren't allowed to strike it, so it's just, they're gonna have to you know dust it off. But. As as Oscar said, like we paid for it, we believe in it, and we paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that's the hope. Theater, man, it, it it will be back though. Like people who are like theater is gonna die. It's not it's not gonna die. But um, right. but when the when of it, I don't know. The when the when of anything. Speaking of when, fellow foodie. I think going back to our initial question where I, I just love how you and I can jump off on different tangents. I, the, before we met for the first time, Christopher Diaz described, said to me, are you ready to meet? You are the male version of her. And I was <laughs> like, I was like, well, yeah, <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, I, 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 I have to, you know, um, and uh, and then I think I, I wasn't that the first time we went on a Brooklyn outing. We went to the crab place. We got like key lime bars. We were in Red Hook. I remember those key lime. I remember it was like key lime on a stick. <laughs> Huge. Yeah. Is that the first time? 
I, that might not have been that might have might not have been the first meeting, but I felt like that was like the first time like we got to just like hang out and chill and eat good food, and kind of you know spend like spend spend the day in the Brooklyn. Themes of our 